probably the delay with the internet here. That's why I meant with the video, but I, it's all good. We can keep it like this and, uh, and then, uh, yeah, that, that works for me. Rika. I'll, I'll try to like, amazing just uh, so it's a little harmonious, I'll try to maybe pause a little bit before I start talking. Make sure that you're done. Roll your bow, gently down the stream. Life is but a dream, yeah, life is but a dream. Gently down the stream, yo. Life is but a dream. From the ocean came a stream, now I'm floating in a dream. Looking in the mirror, it's on me. Everything reveal the unseen inside your very being. The pinnacle, the supreme, all knowing, connected in a ring. Building awareness of subtle things, roots and clarity. I got everything I need, higher authorities. I follow so I can lead myself from a seed into a tree. Truth is self evident, but I must still represent the present tense in every single moment. Breathing deep through life's unfoldment, playing my role, but I don't know it. You are your only opponent. I've always known it. I've always known it. I've always known it. One with the force, cause I'm connected to the source. So waving the ocean, staying on course. Of course, everything will get done. After all, we be under the sun. So I'ma keep looking till everything becomes run. Your boat. Gently down the stream, life is but a dream, yeah, life is but a dream. Gently down the stream, yo, life is but a dream. Emerging from a dream like a stream returns to the ocean. Now I'm flowing in the motion, moving with the tides, dancing with the currents of the sea as they rise and fall. Listen to the melody of it, of it all. Painting on the tapestry Yeah, life, life is but a dream Just take flight Fusing together the dark with the light Let it open up my sight Illustrate mystery as I write Then the mirror recites United in a fight Yet the truth will always shine bright You can only have a soul long Until you hear a sweet song It's calling once uh, again It's calling yeah. once again Alright guys <laughs> Maybe not the most spectacular transition but thanks for bearing with me at the beginning of this live stream we are here we are in person with james maddie a soundcloud artist that i discovered several months back and i've been checking out his music here and there showing it to people really excited that there's a new song that he's put out that we're going to also debut in this ep or uh, this live episode so yeah welcome to the one with all to the universe podcast and Special extra welcome to Mindful Expansion. James, what's up, man? Hey, man, I'm just happy to be here. This is my first time doing anything like this, so I'm really excited to just make this connection and uh, move forward in wholeness and balance. Absolutely. Those are some words that I myself like to use regularly, the wholeness aspect of life. That's what I want, full spectrum <laughs> full spectrum of life. So I know that you are quite the adventurer having moved from Canada to Costa Rica to pursue what it is that you feel you're here to do. So I'd love it if you told us more about yourself and uh, what what you're all about. Absolutely. So yeah, I originally had a spiritual awakening around the end of high school in grade 12, where I I always had this feeling as I was growing up that something was off and I wasn't able to really locate what that was. And I kept drilling into that, like no matter what, it would, I would just be walking and just living life. And then all of a sudden I just kept feeling like something was wrong and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what that was. Right. Until one day I finally came to the conclusion that that was me. I, I wasn't happy with the life I was living. And so that led me down the rabbit hole of reality where I really had to come face to face with some truths about the world that maybe I didn't want to digest at the time, but I ended up doing so and that's made me stronger. Um, so after high school, I ended up going to university because, you know, my, you know, I got the pressure from my parents. They're like, Hey man, go to university and just get, go, go be a psychologist because you want to help people. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll try that. But at the back of my head, I was like, I could just do so much more than this. Right. And so 
I went to university and I pretty much skipped all of my classes and just went hiking every day instead and just spent time in nature because I was understanding at that point the importance of getting back into the nature. And at this point, I had already decided to make some major transitions in my life with uh, going vegan. And also I learned about fluoride and the water system. And so I decided to get out of uh, get a stop drinking tap water and start drinking distilled water. (laughs) And so. And I started to make these, uh, these adjustments in my life, and that started to reflect in the way I was thinking and the way that I was living. And around the end of university, I ended up actually taking a trip to Hawaii. Originally, the plan was to go to Hawaii with my bro for about three weeks. I had $500 that I saved up from working at Pet Value, and I was like, all right, I'm taking a trip to Hawaii. Let's do it. And I went there and the plan was we're going to work at an organic farm for two weeks. And then for the, the other week, we're going to hike down the, the super hot uh, highway and stay at beaches and camp overnight. After I got there, pretty much on the second day, I made a connection with a lady named Donna Maltz, who I work with now today. And she's like a second mother to me. She kind of took me in and she let me know that she was writing a book when I got there. And she was like, yo, uh, I need someone to edit this book. And I was like, well, I read a lot of books when I was growing up so I could help you. And she actually enabled me to stay on the island for an extra six months. And in total, I ended up staying in Hawaii for about a year. But that that was when I was in Hawaii, that really planted a lot of seeds into who I am today. I learned a lot about how to eat properly, you know, how to eat from the earth, how to get connected with the Aina, my roots. The big island of Hawaii is known as uh, energy, uh, I mean, the island of healing. And so going there, I was able to experience a lot of that healing. It has a very magnetic force and many other people have experienced this as well. It has a way of attracting, like the people that are supposed to receive that healing will be attracted and they will stay there longer. And the people that the island doesn't resonate with will be repelled very quickly. And it's a beautiful thing. When I was there, I made a lot of connections with a lot of beautiful people and got to know myself and what I was capable on on a deeper level. And throughout this entire process, actually, it's funny. Now I should go back just one step before I continue going forward with my music. How did I really get involved with all that? So before I even went to Hawaii, I actually made a song called uh, Awakening. And during that song, I wrote the lyrics, I'm going to be going to Hawaii to get that vitamin C. Yeah, you might find me surfing on the Caribbean Sea, raising my knowledge to a higher degree. Or maybe I'll be climbing up the mountain with my bros, weed them into goes. You can tell from our electric glows. And I wrote those lyrics before I even found myself on the way to Hawaii. But since then, every single part of those lyrics have came true. Now I'm up here on the mountain in Costa Rica with my bros and my sisters, with the tribe, connecting and thriving. But that all started when I started to make that music, when I started to plant that seed in that moment, because my whole thing was I recognized when I was back in Canada that I was in a space that I just wasn't happy with. I felt like I was worth more than this. And so I just set out on a journey to become more balanced, to become more harmonious. And I was young, like I'm still quite young. I'm only 22, but I'm finding my way. I'm making my way and I'm doing my best to just work towards wholeness and balance. Like a great mentor of mine, and many of you probably have heard of him, Seven Bomar. Uh, he, he, I've been I've been kind of surfing his wave ever since I got to Hawaii. And uh, I'm happy that I actually got to connect with him in person on, at Envision Festival, which was really awesome. But yeah, basically... I went to Hawaii for a year and then I had uh, reached out to someone I saw on YouTube. His name was Immovable Self, uh, my buddy Bryant, and I connected with him and he let me know that there was a there was a tribe forming here in Costa Rica. And so I made that connection and now I'm here and I've been here for a little bit over a year and I'm not going to lie. The first time I came here, I came here for three months and I didn't know how to drive a motorbike, but I had to learn how to drive a motorbike. I broke my hand in the process, but during those three months when I first got here, I pretty much wanted to run away from the space because I didn't feel like I went, I went through this whole personal dilemma of not feeling like I was worth it again. Like my past self kind of resurged up and was like, oh, you, who are you that you can do all this? Like, and so I was just like, I went through all this crazy nonsense in my mind with what I was, I was at war with myself again. And then I ended up like, uh, I was just like, oh, I'll just go back to Hawaii where I'm comfortable because that's one thing about Costa Rica and about being in nature in this space specifically is that it makes you uncomfortable because when you're uncomfortable, you can grow, right? And, and in order to do that, you have to break through old shells and, and these old versions of yourself. You have to basically kill them. They have to die so that you can progress and continue to grow. 
And so the first time that I was here, I was here for three months and I, I decided to run away. I was like, yo, I'm going to go back to Hawaii. You know, it's going to be comfortable there. I can just make music. And when I was on my way, I was actually in the LA airport and they were like, nah, bro, you're not getting into the country. You spent a year here. Canadians are only allowed to spend six months in a year. And they sent me back to Canada with a five year ban from the States. So I'm actually still currently banned from the States for about like another three years. But uh, that, that was a big wake up call for me to see that I was running away from myself and uh, myself wasn't having that. <laughs> I, I had a mission that I had to fulfill. And so that's how I got back here. And that's where I have been since then, just here with the tribe building and, uh, and working to thrive. Wow, man. Yeah. Hawaii though. That's some serious magic. I remember at the end of actually my term at university as well, I went to Hawaii on a family vacation. I didn't stay for an extended trip like that, which would have probably been miraculous, but just being out in that nature and it's such like a, a low predator environment. Like <laughs> there's not a lot of like predatory energy on the islands as far as the animal mm -hmm. life and just the way it all flows. And I personally felt like the first real connection to nature in my whole life once I made that trip. I was definitely still deep in the matrix at that point. All I'd really uncovered as far as like, well, why are you where you are? Were external reasons like it's the monetary system, it's the greedy, this person and that person. So when I came back from that trip is where I started coming out of my shell and getting out into more camping and uh, connecting with like-minded people who were really truly about co-creating loving vibes together in any medium possible. And so, yeah, the, the fact is that the seeds are there for your development in the, even the very things that you feel are wrong with you. They're like w flags being waved at where if you chose to focus on developing mm. in that place that you're afraid of changing, then you'll definitely go forward <laughs> and you can't run. How can you run away from yourself? Once you know that all is self, especially the, the, you know, where would you go? <laughs> where is there to go? That right. You're not there literally in every sense of the right. word. So yeah. It's really cool, man. And I, I definitely loved getting that, um, section of that song. Like <laughs> you, you flow really well in conversation, just like in, in the music. I highly encourage everyone to go check out some of your, flow poetry mindful expansion with the x no e before the x on soundcloud there's a link in the episode uh, description as well guys so yeah james let's let's continue telling us your story about like where mm -hmm. you're at right now because it sounds like you've made Absolutely. some huge breakthroughs in a very short amount of time and it's exciting So right now, yeah, so it's funny, I, I almost want to call it time travel, you know, I feel like what what I've accomplished so far is I've merged into the future, like with my future self, like I've seen who I needed to become. And then I recognized that there were certain obstacles in the way with patterns and different addictions that I had to overcome. Like I had, a, I was addicted to video games at one point in my parents' basement, but I had to let go of all this stuff so that I could become the version of myself that was more purified, that was more clear, that had more clarity. Right. And, and so I feel like what I did was I started addressing those issues as fast as possible that way i could get to the future as fast as possible and right now where i find myself is in the mountains of costa rica here with my tribe building we actually just finished building our first house and we're working on the second one now we we live on 32 acres of land that we own with a view of the tallest waterfall in the country and we're just working to build uh, a place that is uh, very beautiful and harmonious connected with the natural environment you know so our main focus right now is sovereignty 2020 and and so we're all in this together at the end of the day we recognize that we like we recognize all this self and so there's a, a beautiful system of accountability here with the tribe so what are some of the projects that you guys are collaborating on in in terms of like creating that sovereignty because it's definitely a mission that a lot of us are sharing and of course a lot of us have to have thought about the fact that 2020 means clear, perfect vision. So we're, you know, we're in a time of powerful r rapidity mm -hmm. when it comes to like the quickening of how fast both the distorted and the clear manifestations of what it is we say we want are coming at us. So what you're talking about having to like 
letting go of stuff as quickly as possible to get to the future. That's totally an element of my life as well, especially can resonate on video game addiction because we have this like craving that gets sort of preyed upon to be the hero of the story. And because we feel disempowered uh, when we're starting out in life, especially, and we're kind of like set up to be feeling disempowered by all the structures of the culture, man, uh, we really don't have a chance. You come out of high school with like, minimum wage paying jobs and you're immediately subconsciously equating your own personal value to that that really flimsy paycheck and keeping up with all the incredible cost of living in the so-called modern civilized world it's nothing but like drains on your energy when you could just be chilling outside (laughs) and enjoying the weather and enjoying the perfectly unique beautiful fractal sky that appears every day that's never the same twice. Mm. I guess I should follow that up with a question though. Um, where do you, what is that vision of your future self that you, you see it and how is uh, mindful expansion music wise? How's that connected in there? Absolutely, man. I, I feel like, it's hard to really put it into words, you know, it's, it's something that I kind of see and it, it, it's a lot to do with a greater level of connection with everything around me, a greater, it, it's funny. It's like, I say my future self, but that looks like I'm more out of the picture. Like the identity is a little bit more of the picture and it's more just love. It's more of just this connection, this knowingness that all is self, you know, to be of service to creation. That, that, that's what I see is myself getting closer and uh, be, being more valuable as I bring out my uniqueness and share that in the world. And there, there was a couple things that I, I wanted to, the connection is a little shaky, you know, because I'm here up in the mountains, but there was a couple things that I picked up on that, that you, that you uh, mentioned. One of them actually was about the pre- no predators being in Hawaii. And this was a little bit before, but it, this is really important because I had to, this was like a lesson that I learned because in Costa Rica, like you can die. Like if you're not careful, like there's snakes around here, there's serpents that they can kill you, you know? So you got to be careful. You got to watch where you, you place your foot. And so, you know, everything has light and dark. Every we're, we're living in duality, but like Hawaii, I noticed had a different type of darkness. The darkness there, they're dealing more with the system being the government and what the government is doing with the pollution of Monsanto on the islands and all this crazy nonsense going on. You know what I'm saying? It's like they're bombing into the center of their island. It's just like this beautiful tropical paradise, but you got the government doing crazy stuff. In Costa Rica, there's a little bit less of that, and there's more. It, that, that's what I would describe more as artificial darkness. And, and then you have the more natural darkness, which is just nature. You know what I'm saying? Like the 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 real matrix of nature and dealing with these these more like these predatory forces that I do truly exist. And it's good because those sharpen you like it's like sharpening your blade every day it's like you gotta you can't walk around out here at night without a flashlight like you you gotta stay on your toes you have to be aware you have to be at your peak all as much as possible so that you don't uh you don't get yourself harmed in some situation and so doing that makes you stronger and that's one of the reasons why i really appreciate this uh environment in costa rica but another thing you asked about like how how is the tribe moving towards that goal of sovereignty 2020 really really for us you know it's we recognize that sovereignty is something that comes from inside first and so we're always working together to refine ourselves like i said with the whole sharpening of the blades that's kind of what the tribe does for each other and 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 that's a very very beautiful process um uh, you know on on a physical realm that looks like you know having all our needs met with the food you know with the with the power with the water we you know we got a fresh mountain stream that we can go down to and get get water whenever we need and and just things like that like having uh, like one one of the things that i had to ask myself and i asked back in canada that was one of the main questions that uh, that, that helped propel me out of that vortex. Cause really, you know, the matrix is very much a vortex it, it is draining people's potential and their energy. And so in order to exit that and go in the opposite direction, you're going to have to build enough thrust, enough momentum to move in that way. And the, the only way you can do that is if you get charged up and you get charged up by taking responsibility, taking charge of your life. So it all works together. You see, it's very connected. And so, it, so, so basically what I'm saying is that, uh, having a tribe is really important 
you know, and, and tapping into these frequencies is, is very important because the, the tribe it enables you to be accountable and enables you to have a reflection, a mirror that can show you yourself so that you can see maybe the aspects of yourself that you were missing before and you can locate them and you, you can deal with them. Uh, so some of the core values that are very important are obviously loyalty and honor uh, is a big theme right now. With, with, with our current tribe and just with the, just with the human beings in general, it seems like we've lost our, our loyalty and honor in, in, with the masses. So regaining that is, is a big part of this whole process. Some of the things you're talking about there are definitely very common interverse topics. And we're talking about specifically how to get sovereignty or how to be back in charge of your life. Well, are you really responsible enough to be in charge of anything if you're living this like slacky poo looking at the phone most of the time, not even sure who's around you in public places type of uh, attention deficit. <laughs> I'm speaking about myself here in, in many senses. Like I, I personally need more attention to my body and attention to my environment. I don't see how you could ever not need more of that. Like why, why should you ever seek to have any less of it? Honestly, and when you're in an environment where yeah, a snake could step on you, that's something you have to be really extra mindful about. And it's like automatic. I love how you use the metaphor of sharpening the blade. You definitely, your body doesn't want to die. So it's going to like pull you into it and make sure that <laughs> even if it's through like giving you a big fear signal and mm. then paying attention to that and getting to the root of why, why is the fear signal going on? It's because I'm not paying enough attention to what I'm doing. I mean, I, I think that personally, you still will experience draw things to you with your fear, even outside of the jungle in the concrete jungle. I've seen people draw cops to themselves whenever they had some reason why they could get themselves in trouble with cops just by being super scared about it. And then myself included in other people, police officers are treat us like we're invisible because we just like respect <laughs> the environment we're in at all times. I don't know how else to put it <laughs> anyway. Um, I could go on, but we're talking about getting more thrust. That's what I want to go on about because I know that this is part of your journey too with mm. the diet and the the real energy power center of this whole body spaceship time machine that we're in to, is actually the root chakra, right? Which is the furnace. Right. So if, it's also very connected to this rat race that people get stuck in mm -hmm. because if your root chakra is off spin, you don't have anything really other than survival mode in mind, which means you're willing to trade your time, Saturn, Kronos, Root Chakra, are all correlated, you're willing to trade your time for the currency instead of uh, generating the current from within by being so balanced and powerful, right? So you get caught in these loops whenever that Root Chakra is on a bad wobble, but if you get it spinning quickly enough and standing upright, then you're in a different direction of expansion, upward thrust, right? Going up and seeing what next chakra needs to be balanced instead of just being constantly in the survival mode, having your security threatened. So yeah, how, how is that? How, what have you done for your own thrusters? <laughs> can, can you say that again? Yeah, what have you done for your own, like your thruster systems, right? Like how have you brought those uh, back online for your body spaceship? Like what are some of the strategies? How do you respect that? I'm trying to, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you one second. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can find a little bit better surface. It's been, it's kind of like fading in and out and, and trying to get the balance. You're in the here. jungle, man. Right, like right, the fact uh, that we can try do saying this that is again all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, talk, talk about the root yeah, chakra yeah, yeah. health and what you've done to cleanse, purify, heal, power up. Like, wh where's that journey taking you? What kind of knowledge can you share? You know, it's funny that you're saying that, man. <laughs> I'm actually right now, uh, I'm on a uh, full body internal cleansing kit. You know, the seven Bomar cells that is on his website, uh, secretenergy.com. And I'm taking the, the whole tribe is on a, a, a full body internal cleansing kit right now, actually. And that's a, when it comes to cleansing with the root chakra, you know, the root chakra is also, uh, it corresponds to the colon as well. And, and so it, having going through the colon cleanse and just letting go of all, all those old toxins that were in my body is a great way to build thrust in the opposite direction. I can tell you that. Um, 
but yeah, basically the root chakra is dealing with fire. So it's, it's all about that, like inner passion for me. It, and it's like, you know, it's also uh, like the root chakra is your ground. So in order to have a healthy root chakra, you need to have a very healthy connection with your mother. And that's like a big thing for so many people is we've got disconnected from the earth, from our mother. And we can put our roots in and we can like be grounded is super key to a healthy root chakra because from there we can start to start to work to put some logs on that fire and build that passion. And, and that's really what we feel like the root chakra is directly to this passion and building those uh, those passions up. And for me, like one of those is music. Music is one of my passions. And so having uh, and share it with other people is super key for me. And I feel like it, it should be important to everyone else as well to uh, find a way to basically like that. That's really the great work is to find a way to raise those energies up from the caustics of your spine. That's dealing with the Kundalini and you know, those two serpents, you know, the angel and the demon and the duality inside yourself and finding that balance between the masculine and feminine poles. That's what it's all about. And in order to do that, you have to be honest with yourself. That's what it's always came back down to me is that honor and that honesty and just being willing to take a look in the mirror because life is a mirror, right? Like all this self, we're, we're looking at ourselves when we look outside. And so being able to see that what you're currently surrounded by is a reflection of your electromagnetic field, is a reflection of who you are. And so as you begin to change, what you're surrounded by begins to change as well. Um, so yeah, when it comes to the root chakra, a lot of people are holding on to a lot of things and a lot of people aren't connected with their roots like they should be. But it's just like anything. It's like if you really want to raise your energy up, you don't want to do that if you're unbalanced. Because if you're raising your energy up, you will just tip over and fall. <laughs> and it's not that's not what you want to do. Because, for instance, if you're going maybe 10 miles per hour, right? You're not like if you get in a crash, okay, whatever. But if you're going 50 miles per hour and then you get in a crash, you might have some problems. So it's important before you really start to cultivate your energy to have that root chakra connected. And, and to have those roots, to have that connection with your mother so that because it, really what this is all about and even with my new song, Source Energy, what this is about is being uh, a vessel, a, a vessel that is pure so that you can contain more energy. And the only way to do that is to have a strong connection with your roots because that allows the energy to flow. It can be grounded because if it's just stuck in you and you don't release it, then you'll you'll have problems you you'll contract issues like for instance like bipolar or, uh, these other issues that we see in our society of people that have uh unlocked a little bit more energy but have no idea how to contain themselves and manage it so when it comes to root chakra like i said it's just about having a connection with your roots and being able to channel that fire in, and and allow it to ascend within yourself it totally is. And the, the cleanse kit you brought up is something I've been talking to lots of people about. Not just that cleanse kit, but colon cleansing as a good place to start. And when you talk about getting into a crash, <laughs> I had I had just come off a colon cleanse. I built up a huge amount of kundalini energy. I preserved my sexual energy for several weeks even and had this amazing basically like what you would call an endogenous DMT release type experience, the real activation out of it. Mm. And then after that though, um, in the process of it lost, lost root chakra stability <laughs> because, uh, part of what brought me to that state yeah, yeah. was like some food, sleep and water deprivation. And so I got way up high, but untethered and had like a crash landing and where I landed was back in some, certain old bad habits and insecurities. It was really amazing because there was like a time in the activation for like six, six mm. hours where I knew like everything. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Like all the, every, I could see the connection from every internal thought mm. and vibration and literally like on a frequency level with the external reality. That's the only way I can really put it into words where I'm at now after like, now I'm like doing some repairs, <laughs> emergency repairs. But yeah, what, what what's right, going right. on with this disconnect in our energy flow has a lot to do with this like seven color prism prison idea 
and Seven Bomar talks about this a lot, actually. Mm. But what I've gleaned out of it from listening to him and coming to my own conclusions is that there's definitely not seven chakras in your system. There's really more, like if we're going to minimal, minimize it down to a certain number, mm. it's going to have to be nine because you have the Earth Star chakra below you, which is like literally where you're sure. connected to the Earth through. And if that's not in your awareness, then uh, you're not consciously keeping your tether connected. So you either are or you're not tethered. Maybe if you're like walking around barefoot, you're tethered by default. But there, there's a certain level of like knowing and a healthy flow that you got to maintain. It's, it's a subtle thing. If you're not grounded like through that Earth Star Chakra, you won't necessarily notice it if you're not paying attention to what types of things happen to you and ways that you feel when you're ungrounded. And like, that's up to you to figure out. <laughs> it's not like you have to go around constantly thinking like, Oh, I'm grounded. I'm grounded. I'm grounded. You know, that doesn't have to like consume you like that. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's a subtle, tricky thing for each of us. But then there's this other chakra too, that is important to know about above, which some people call the halo chakra, which is super cool because it's like, it's like a magical spell, like a protection against the hater if you just are aware of it, that there's a chakra ab above hmm. you that pr essentially like cosmic protection in a sense. The best metaphor is that if there's a football game going on and there's like a coach that's up at the high part of the bleachers calling plays to the players, that coach makes sure not to call plays that put players into places where they shouldn't be or where bad things happen to them, right? So maintaining that knowledge that you have like this type of protection hmm. or shield that self, which is both external and internal, is only flowing you to where is going to help you grow best, then you're not going to create the own resistance in yourself that actually causes you to get take the damage or take the, to, you know, the bad vibes, uh, create the stagnant vibes, essentially, bad vibes is the wrong word, it's just stagnant energy. So right. yeah, there's this, this channel above and below Absolutely. that totally gr grounds and protects us. But if we're just trapped in the body only and we're not even aware that we extend above and below the body and we are the bridge that connects heaven and earth then it's it's uh pretty easy to feel bewildered or feel unsafe or feel like paranoid there's all these things like <laughs> especially when we talk about the nefarious activities of mm -hmm. the government if you will so this this is a super cool topic and i love that we're able to like connect connect right. on this because this is this is what I felt coming through the lyrics of your music, this type of, uh, uh this type of awareness, I guess, high, high level perspectives. Right. Right. And that, and that, that's really the goal with my, my music is, is it's kind of like a journal for myself. You know, I, I, I can kind of see the progression in my own consciousness based upon, uh, the rhymes and the lyrics that I put down, but I also, you know, I also want to share is share this knowledge and this insight, and and it's a way for me to reprogram my mind. A lot of it is like self mantras, like mantras that have helped me. You know, I, I'm I'm my greatest fan, so I've I've listened to my music and I use it to program my mind so that I can continue to live in a balanced and harmonious reality and and work to refine that and continue to bring in uh, greater manifestations of more beautiful things that I want to see. Like there's, there's one, one saying that I really like to say is that, you know, life is so beautiful right now and I can only see it becoming more beautiful. And, and that seems to be the direction that I'm headed in, uh, in contrast to the direction of, uh, I wouldn't say society in general, but, uh, when I was in the matrix and I was going in that vortex and, you know, I was heading in the other direction, it just seemed that things were just getting more chaotic and, and out of the, in the, going in the wrong direction, say, say the least, you know, so to see, see it uh, becoming more beautiful is, is an awesome feeling. And I'm, I'm very happy that, uh, I decided to take this responsibility because that's really what a lot of people, like a lot of people are waiting uh, I, I've noticed and I, I want to encourage anyone that's listening and it, it just to stop waiting because the longer you wait when you're in time, like if you're in time, you should feel some type of pressure because it, the fact that you're in time means that, I mean, everything in time dies. So it's important if you're in here to figure out how to die before you die. And, and that's something that I'm working towards, you know, I'm not there yet, but, and I, I don't claim to have all the answers. I, I'm, I'm a student of life, but I recognize the, the importance. It's like life is a game, but it's also very serious. And so I just recognize the importance of taking responsibility for my life and, and, and stopping and no longer waiting and just t and moving into a space of action so that I can accomplish the things that I want to see. I can 
live in a dream that I created, <laughs> you know? And so it, it, it's all about living in, in the, in order with the natural laws, with the, with the natural world and, and returning to nature, returning to our roots so that we can learn and progress from there. Because it, it seems that most of the disconnection that we do have in our society is based upon that lack of connection with our mother. And, and it's important to go back to our mother because that's where we get the nourishment to really gain that momentum, to gain that thrust, to get out of the situation, the vortex that we're in and head in the opposite direction or head in the, the right direction forward into the future. So, so yeah. There's so much there to unpack, actually. I don't, I'll, I'll just start with mm-hmm. what I'm, what I caught at the very end and then maybe I'll make my way to other insights that were just popping off while you're talking there. But yeah, that <laughs> inspiration, bro. Uh, thank you so much. This thing with the mother, though, is also your real mother, not that your earth isn't your real mother, but like your human mother right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, The relationship you have with her is also super important. And not all of us get to like experience that relationship in 3D or physical anymore for one reason or another, or maybe some of us never really had that. And so that's okay. Don't feel like you need to feel lost because you don't have the, you can't act on this particular piece of insight but for those of us that have mothers that we're still close with or able to be close with you know that's the number one person that you ought to be giving the info to and spreading the knowledge to for healing because first of all she most likely loves you unconditionally so she's the most likely person to actually listen to what you say even if she's completely brainwashed the other direction and even maybe you got to plant certain seeds before other ones are going to be able to be planted and that's fine but your mother is also like a, a maven, a person who has the most influence on the whole rest of the family, not just your immediate family, but the mothers have huge influence on all the other families connected to the family. So healing, helping your mother to heal is another thing that you can do to help the entire earth heal faster. And it's pretty cool because it's like your, your energy mm-hmm. stream is connected to that person in a quantumly entangled way, if you will. So you're always going to get more energy from supporting and helping heal your mother than from like being well to tell the truth the way a lot of us were in our generation which was too highly dependent on the mother to provide or the mother and father to provide lots of stuff and not having to take the training wheels off till we're way older in life which is sort of natural that our parents would have treated us this way based on the way that their lives were going. So it's not like something to blame. It's just something to be aware of that it's time to give back to the mother (laughs) in a real way and across the entire fractal in every way we can represent that. And the thing about life and death and (laughs) consciously Mm -hmm. living your, your dream, well, when you're in the dream, are you even like usually worried about if you're alive or dead, first of all, and isn't the word alive also a lie? And then maybe, because we're so attached to the concept of this one life and that maybe that we're scared that maybe it's all we have, or it's the only thing we are that we hold onto it and clutch it too tightly. And then it can't bloom and blossom unless we open up our hand where it could possibly fall out of our hand, but that's okay because there's life everywhere and it's, and it's all you. So the key is to like, Mm -hmm. not to being unafraid of death. It's actually to not be overly attached to life itself it's like this paradox is actually the middle way and then it doesn't matter that that you're expanding in both directions that the chaos <laughs> is multiplying just as fast as the beauty is expanding especially if you make that chaos your chosen chaos in a sense like you went to costa rica you're you're dealing with snakes you're dealing with um some, some occasionally dangerous situations in the nature just like a person who goes to the gym and puts himself through uncomfortable stuff so that later they're stronger. You know, if you never put yourself in the uncomfortable on purpose, life's going to make you uncomfortable all the time in ways that aren't making you grow in the direction that you want to grow, but actually shaping and molding you into something like a piece of clay in someone's hand. It's another way of saying that if you don't, are, if you don't control yourself right. then something else controls you in a sense. So, and it's still yourself, but it's the part of yourself that you've compartmentalized and pushed away and said, I don't want to be responsible for that. So <laughs> it's they've got all kinds of darkness in that part of self. <laughs> you got to really get, be sure Absolutely. that that's not what's driving. Yeah. 
Absolutely, man. I, I, I hear you. And it's interesting that you said with the, the molding and the shaping in the middle way, like I really can connect with that. That's something that I'm coming to terms with every day. It's just, you know, the Tao. And I study Taoism a little bit and just understanding how to let things flow and not trying to force them like by not trying to force things you become the force <laughs> if that makes sense it's like it, 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 and that's the beautiful thing to be this conduit this this conduit for source energy and to allow it to flow through you and just to let things take their natural course and and move out of your own way because when you move out of your own way things can flow freely and 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 that's the whole thing like just uh, uh and also with the sorry so just jumping right here to uh the molding and the shaping it's like we're all currently molding and sculpting ourselves and life is doing that because life uh this world is a crucible we're in a crucible and within a crucible that is where things are put under pressure and that pressure the proper amount of pressure can be very beneficial now, and you know when you're uncomfortable most likely you're feeling some sort of pressure you know you're feeling pressure to do this or to do that or you do your work or whatever it is but it's that pressure that makes us stronger and it, with the right amount you know with the alchemists it, what they would do is they take one base element and then they you know they took lead and they turned it into gold and in order to do that you needed to apply a certain amount of pressure and that's the, the process of crystallization is like a carbon carbon is six 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 and that's the the the, the number of the beast and and, that, and we as humans are carbon based beings this is the animal body that we're in but the idea was to become more crystalline more like a diamond which is six one six and, and, and in order to get there you had to be put under pressure you had to crystallize your consciousness through these character building things through these uh, subtle lessons that you would have to come to learn. And, and this is the real university of life. This is the real university of self. <laughs> and we're all here in this crucible. We're all here growing and growing together. And, and that's a big part of me being here with the tribe is just having uh, a group of people around me that are constantly inspiring me and motivating me to grow into my greatest version every single day. And also holding me accountable when I'm not raising and rising to my fullest potential when I'm cutting myself short because you know from time to time we do that you know there's been times where it, where where I I've been called out and I'm very grateful for that you know that it helps me it's helped me grow and and just having that connection that's really what it's all about man it's like you, you having a system of support a system of connection around you with with that with that love and and another thing like with the mother like I feel like the closer I get to Mother Earth, the closer my relationship is with my own mother. And like I mentioned, my, my second mother from Hawaii, Donna, and also my business partner, I feel like our relationships just get closer by the day. And I noticed that just, just how I relate to the divine feminine has become more in balance, especially, especially since, like you, like you mentioned about cultivating your sexual energy and stuff. It, for me, it's been like a, a year, a year and a half, maybe, maybe, you know, I realized it a couple of years ago, but I only took it seriously maybe about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And since then, like, I would say that's one of the main reasons for my success is just taking what was an inverted form. Like, you know, I, I was totally inverted before in the way that I was thinking and the way that I was acting and, and, and reversing that and going back in the right direction. And, and, and that has really helped me find success as well. And, and I feel like, you know, just uh, on a, a last little thing about that is that, that that like creative force, that vital life force is so important because it enables you to create things. And that's a lot of where my music comes from. And I noticed that when I'm making music, that's when I'm doing my best. When I have a way to express myself and a way to create things, that is a, a, a part of my expansion into a greater level of myself. So, so and yeah. You're creating those musical sigils. Like you said, you're able to retrain not retrain, but to just like reinforce your intentions by listening to your own music. I think that is cool. And I guess that's probably an unintended, well, it is intended. It just, I wasn't aware that it was going to happen when I started the show, but I have to hear myself a lot <laughs> doing this show <laughs> and also hear really right. good ideas from other people. And I hear it more than once because at least one more time through, I'm, I'm going through all of it to take notes and edit. So I'm, I'm having the conversations at least twice, if not hearing them occasionally later. I will go back and listen to certain episodes because the person I was talking to was, was sharing information that I want to connect more deeply with. And then I would hear myself say something and be like, wow, that, just, that was definitely like an inspired moment where you, you can definitely resonate with that idea and hold on to it because you, you lost it since that conversation. Put it back in the, the toolkit, mm. you know, like creating these records of where we're at through our art, through our creations, through our passions, they're like save points in the video game that you're not going to lose that because you put it in a container 
Whereas a, a lot of us are just going around with good ideas all the time that, cause we all are generators of ideas. That's what the whole, right. that's what the whole enslavement is really about. That's why people kind of don't get it. They think they're fairly free externally, but your ideas are being harvested. You're not working for yourself or putting that energy back into a container that you own or you hold on to. And that, I mean, it just goes everywhere. It's kind of interesting that inverted thrust, when we look at certain words like nobility, even as far back as in the middle ages, the mm. common people would have probably had negative associations with the word nobility. Like the nobles are oppressive or the nobility <laughs> is cruel or evil or whatever. And now they call it the elite, but it's the same thing. You're, whenever you're telling yourself that, you're telling yourself not to be noble. So it's like tricky word magic and that there's a real power, the fire energy, um, the masculine yang energy back to the Tao that needs to be put back in its place, I guess, in its proper place. Cause most people mm -hmm. bottle up their fire and then unleash it on uh, unsuspecting friends and family and moments of rage, right, right. <laughs> just rent, you know, random rage and outbursts. So that fire energy does need to be output, but you could actually use it to temper the steel of your, of your consciousness, create that sharp sword words or swords as well. So <laughs> yeah, man, you're doing right. Ab absolutely. I feel that with the fire and, you know, another, another way to help put your fire in balance is get a little bit of water. Uh, the next song that I'm working on is uh, more of a, a Chinese orientated uh, style with uh, with uh, a lot of water theme because I felt like you know I was I, I can I can tend to uh, prefer fire at times and so uh, introducing water is very healthy and you know also just ha having a general uh, a general balance of all the elements in your life is 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 really key and, and another thing that let me let me see I'm mean, gonna just slip my mind but uh, what were you saying about uh, okay never mind it, it slipped my mind but Basically, what I'm trying to say is that having having a balanced repertoire of those elements within yourself, like having a deep connection and work, because each of those elements have their own uh, initiations, their own lessons to teach you. And so working with the fire is really important. But when you feel like you've learned your lessons from that and, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Sorry. That's what it was. This is something for I have to, I have to talk about. It. So nobility, that, that is just a huge theme for me in my life is like learning how to become noble and how to hold myself to that standard so that I can be valuable so that I can be depended on to to be trustworthy to be loyal and honorable and and, that, and that's just so key for me and, and, and you know I I, I just learning how to integrate that idea into my life is a key for me it's like I feel like that's the key that can really unlock so much like like i feel like that might be the infinity key right there just the 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 status of becoming a noble and what it actually takes to be to be that and become that and and hold that state and and be able to compose yourself in that form so that you can uh tr transmit that frequency into the world and live in that state it's just like nobles they live with the will of heaven they live like with the Tao. like they don't act in they don't they're not in conflict with the truth essentially they they live in harmony with the truth and that is what enables them to be successful it's all that and more too i mean there's so much to it if we want to have a human right. family that we can all depend on it starts with you where you know the only way that you're going to be able to master the the real chaos not the fake chaos that's created by the society but the real chaos of like okay i'm outside how do i not die <laughs> <laughs> How do I keep this vessel in good shape? Uh, <laughs> that, that it, I mean, other than aligning with natural law to do that, what it requires is total personal responsibility so that no matter what comes up, you know it's always going to be okay because you're there. But if you can't trust yourself <laughs> to always do the right thing because in the little moments you let stuff slide that you feel and tell yourself it's not a big deal, whether it's like, I'm just going to eat this bag of M&Ms, even though I know it's complete poison, <laughs> you know, the, those right. little moments are you telling yourself you can't trust yourself. And we all mm -hmm. have moments where we maybe breach our own trust. And that's part of the game of uh, evolution and ad advancing. But it's about, like you said earlier, letting go of those things as quickly as possible to get to the future. And 
the right. noble gases, that's another interesting correlation there as well. The noble gases rise up, they're, they're less dense, they're lighter. So if you want to be noble, get lighter. The colon cleanse is a good way to right. do that, to get lighter. Turning lead into gold, well, lead is uh, connected with Saturn, connected with the root chakra. It's the planetary mm -hmm. metal. So more and more obvious clues that that's what you should be working with. But back to like human family, human tribe, actual security, it, because the root is more than just your personal furnace. It also is connected to like your family, familial connections and how secure you are in your relationships in, in life. It's, it's like the foundation. So it's like everything that's foundational and it's at the base of your reality experience, a root chakra has to do with. And nobles, something about nobles, at least historically speaking, if you were a noble and you knew another noble was coming over, you would give them everything as if they were a member of your family. You would treat them like they lived with you until they wanted to leave because you knew they would do the same thing for you and they brought you a bunch of gifts that you that are perfect for you. And just all around, there's this like, because the nobles, I guess, have this sort of material security also connected to the root where they don't, they're not worried about like running out of money. They have plenty of everything. They just give freely to each other. And, uh, you know, it also makes sense in a, in a way to look at like, well, why don't they just give freely to all the peasants or commoners and not other nobles? Because this is something I've realized just recently. I've, I mean, I've, I've kind of felt it, but I'm really sure about it now, which is that you can't give something material to somebody to help them. The only thing you can give somebody to help them is like time and attention. And anything you just give to them that's physical, that doesn't involve mm. the time and the attention it's going to go to, it's going to go to misuse in some capacity or it's at risk of going to misuse. I should say, I don't, I'm not saying never give charitably, definitely not saying that, but just realize that there's a reason why there's a, a cliche about giving bums $20 and them spending it on liquor where you could go and like take that guy to dinner and like ask him about how he's doing and what he really needs in life to get unstuck. That would be way better than giving him $20. Right. But so if you just throw the $20 out the window and drive off, I, uh, you can kind of feel good about yourself in that moment. Like, yeah, I did something, but you're, there's more to it. There's so much more to it. Your energetic flow is now connected up to that guy. So the energy symbolically of the money you just handed to that person is flowing to them. So we want to put our energy into noble things and noble people and, and let that be what attracts people who haven't found their inner nobility yet and give them tools and time and attention and structures like once we freed ourselves and have that personal sovereignty then those who are still building up that sovereignty and nobility that come to us for help we can be like yeah go work in the garden with us today and they're going to learn stuff and they're going to expand and it's just a totally they're going to become noble out of that connecting to the mother so this super important stuff <laughs> We still got you, James. Maybe experience a connection problem here, folks. Let's give it a second. I haven't even checked to see if there's people in the stream. Uh-oh, I wonder if we have any comments. Yeah, I, the the last bit there cut out, but I heard, I heard the end there. Oh, cool. Well, I'm checking out the time. I think this is a good point that uh, uh, we could wrap ourselves up and I'm going to play it to close us out your newest track. And if you want to stick around after I play that track and just chill for a couple minutes while it plays, you could tell us more about it, but I don't have a way to set it up where you can hear it too. So <laughs> you just have to know what it's about. I'm sure you do. Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm going to play this new song source energy. Good. And then we'll talk to Maddie about it and then uh, wrap things up, guys. Oh. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. We're recording this live from Costa Rica. It's mindful expansion. Life is so beautiful. I'm grateful. Life is so beautiful. I'm grateful. Life is so beautiful. I'm grateful. Yeah. 
I'm grateful, honor the creation through everything I'm making. In a dream, my shape is so breathtaking. Giving thanks every morning when I'm waking up, feeling amazing. Yeah, I ain't wasting a minute or a moment. Nah, nah, I own it. Sitting on my throne, yeah, my mind in the zone. My spirit has grown from the seeds that I've sown. This body ain't mine for a purpose, it was loaned. Now I'm giving from my heart so I can grow rich. This is how we build a bridge. This is how you flip the switch. Time to write your own scripts. Go inside and find eclipse. Self knowledge leads to bliss. Stay aligned, never miss. You gotta die if you really wanna live. If you really wanna live, if you really wanna live. Go inside and master your mind. Find the mastermind behind the rhyme. Serve the rhythm while you design a reality where you can thrive. Wholeness and balance is the tribe. This feeling I can't describe. This feeling I can't describe. Pure love has arrived. I'm grateful for happiness that helped me survive through the tough times. When I feel tired alone with nowhere to go, the only choice was to grow. So I got in my boat and I started to row. Now I'm on a roll. Surfing on this flow, working to become whole. whole. So there's a, there's a gradual process here. The, the, the planet doesn't just heat up in a day, but it is heating up. So it's giving you the opportunity to purify yourself, become more conductive. Energy is going to arrive regardless. It cannot be stopped. You can't do it. <laughs> and that's by design. The energy that comes to the planet will grow exponentially. Life is so beautiful, I'm grateful. Life is so beautiful, I'm grateful. Life is so beautiful, I'm grateful. Yeah, wow, I'm grateful. Nice. The truth will set you free, but only if you want to be. Open up your eyes and face your reality. Every day I'm motivated to be a better me. Unity is the key, staying rooted like a tree. Everything under the sun is already done. We went in the battle before it's even begun. Gave up who I am so I can become the one that will always overcome any challenge that seeks to divide from myself i cannot hide so i turn my eyes inside and find my god no matter how many times i die my true essence always survives truthfully i've never felt this alive barefoot on the earth with my eyes to the sky i'm gonna keep working till i learn how to fly i'm fully expand with the breath getting high I'm working together with my tribe unified yo if you enjoyed this please share like and comment spread the message spread the word Thank you all for listening. Aloha and Pura Vida. All right, dude, we got through it. Man, it definitely talked about some specific things that we were on just now uh, about you got to die if you want to live. That was definitely clear uh, from our conversation just now. Die to the false self to live to your truest and highest self. But Dang, dude, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> I've already I've already heard it before, but it's always fun to listen to you flow. It's like <laughs> it's not. The, I know that it's you, but there's almost like a persona to the voice that comes through and out. That's definitely feels bigger than just you. And I I look forward to seeing how you grow with it. Absolutely, man. Thank you. I'm definitely growing with every song that I come out with. I really feel like the the lyrics they they come from my future self. It, it, they well, they come from who I am now, but they're they're leading me on a trail to my future self. So I, I follow them. I, I integrate integrate them into my mind and and li live through those words, and that and that enables me to achieve more harmony in my life. But yeah, that that song was mostly just inspired by having that connection with source energy having that connection with that source that that fountain of wisdom within yourself and and being able to pull that out and 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 see that in others around you and, and surrounding yourself with your reflections what the people that you you want to live with and the people that you want to uh, have within your life that are encouraging you to see that life is beautiful and, and be grateful every moment because it, it's so key to have that connection and so uh, that that song was mostly you know you, you gotta die like <laughs> you know i put that in there for a reason like at the end of the day i feel like uh, my pa i've killed my past self multiple times now and that's enabled me to grow and to find a way to truly live better than i was living before and, and that, that's a process that we're continuously doing you know the saying goes the adept dies daily so it's just this process of refining yourself and i hope with my music to inspire others to do the same and just achieve a greater level of harmony and balance and 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 really live live with the awareness that all is self and that everything is connected in that your life is a product of the actions the thoughts and like the reason where you're here wherever you are right now because of 
everything that you've put into your life so far. And so to have a strong vision of your future and to know where you're going is so essential. And so I hope with my music to, you know, at least I'm painting my own picture with my music. So if other people feel like that's the frequency they want to tune into and they want to move towards wholeness and balance, then that's what's up. And I, I'm, I'm happy to share it with others and, uh, and hope that they find some value in it. The stuff you said at the end there, you could basically just switch music to podcast and then I could have said all that. <laughs> and that would be how I feel about what I'm doing. So it's cool, man. <laughs> We're going to do this again if you're up for it. And like a maybe like a two hour one where we don't mess with video and just do like a full fledged episode. But I wanted to experiment more with my, my live format. And thanks for letting me do that with you and for being such a clear reflection of that source energy. It's been an inspiration to chat. I was already inspired by you because of the, the lyrics you put out and we are definitely on the same vibe of uh, unity, wholeness, sovereignty, respect for self in all forms, internal and external, balancing the polarities and all those other great things that can be buzzwords to the spiritual community unless they're really understood. And I think this conversation broke things down, built things back up in a way where now someone might have a better idea of where certain things are in themselves than they had before. And that's what I hope to achieve. I know that I achieved that for myself. And I think the seeds are definitely planted on fertile ground with uh, our audience here. So thanks everyone for tuning in. James, give everybody the places where you'd like them to hit you up on the internet if you want to share any social media. And definitely the SoundCloud link is in the, uh, the show description, but you can give that as well. Yeah, for sure. You can find me on Twitter at Mindful Expansion. My SoundCloud is Mindful Expansion, just with an X, no E. And I look forward to connecting with y'all. If you have any questions, uh, I'm here to always help and assist. Beautiful, brother. Well, as I say, Costa Rica, Pura Vida. Aloha and Pura Vida, my friend. Uh, I'm happy to come on here and connect, and we can definitely see if uh, some uh, another connection is possible in the future. Oh, it will be. I mean, we're just getting started. <laughs> this is the beginning for both of us in what we're doing, so uh, it's going to be a fruitful relationship. I don't always feel this way <laughs> about people from the internet, but I have a strong feeling we're going to connect in real life sooner than later, so looking forward to that as well. And yeah, well, keep bringing forward those gems and jewels from the mind minds. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, right. I feel you. Yeah, man. Have a, have a wonderful day. It was a great time to connect. I'll definitely uh, be talking with you soon. Cool, man. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>